Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Today is the summer solstice where the sun is highest in the sky. How is the deep winter greenhouse working in the heat of the summer? Let me show you. <laughs> So my dad actually phoned and reminded me, I just about forgot. Um, it's been rainy and overcast, so the sun luckily peaked out about midday and I was able to mark the sun on my concrete forms. So I can mark it on the concrete after I pour that in a few weeks here. So that's good uh, that I didn't miss that. But essentially, if you haven't watched my my first videos of the construction of the greenhouse and our tour of the greenhouse, I explain how this design works. So today is June the 21st. It is the summer solstice. Um, at my latitude of 53, the summer solstice angle is about 61.3 degrees. So the sun is the highest in the sky and it is the longest day of the year today. So that my in-ground bed behind me the sun hits well over half of the in-ground bed of full sun so my front raised bed i can grow things full sun uh, it's going to hit my concrete sidewalk there this the sun is so i'll be painting that white because i don't want the the heat um to collect in the summertime in the winter time that side this sidewalk here is it is uh, shaded but in the back of the greenhouse where most of my concrete is going see there's the Sun right there the Sun just peaked out so half of the greenhouse so we plant stuff that doesn't want full sun at the back of the greenhouse in the summertime. We've even got tomatoes in the back and some other things that are doing just fine without the full sun. But in the wintertime, that the summer solstice is here today. Then it'll the sun will kind of hang out here and it's going to slowly slowly then start picking up speed as it gets colder outside and the days get shorter the sun's going to go here all the way up to about three three and a half feet of the back wall so the greenhouse in the coldest part of the year the winter solstice this that all that sun energy is going to be hitting my black concrete and the black uh, 45 gallon drums filled with water a bunch of rock uh, my in-floor heat pipes that are going in the concrete. So right now, it is cooler in the greenhouse than it is outside. Now when you step in the sun, it's just like being in the sun outside. It's nice and warm. When you go in the shade, it's like being in a cool shady spot outside. So most people's greenhouses in the summertime is just blasted by the entire sun. So greenhouse uh, people will be putting up shade cloths uh, and their greenhouse is gonna be super hot. They're gonna need vents up high. They're gonna need fans going. They're gonna need to vent that thing because it's just blasted by the sun. My design where it's about half of the building is shaded. Plus I haven't even got that thermal mass which is gonna be a cooling agent all this water and uh, concrete is going to help cool the greenhouse um, it just works it's like air conditioning so it's cooler in my greenhouse than it is outside right now and there's no fans going there's no high ventilation um, if you can see without the glare of the sun the I haven't even lifted up the poly to open up my bus windows so this was this was a kind of a neat experiment. Uh, I didn't have last summer all the insulation and vapor barrier in. So this is a super insulated building R60. So without insulation vapor barrier, the sun coming in at an angle, it was like being inside a tin can. The greenhouse would get quite a bit hotter and I was a little bit worried. So I, I have all these bus windows that I can open up, um, but I haven't even needed them this year yet and it's because the insulation is keeping it 
the sun's heat, it hits the tin, the roof vents properly, like uh, proper building construction, and the insulation keeps the greenhouse from overheating. So this, this is just, like I'm fascinated. I didn't even need to put in all these bus windows. So uh, I'll ha I have this window open right now. This door uh, I can open up. I have a couple windows open here. Um, the, on the north side, I have my overhead door out there. I'm just doing my uh, sewage lines and stuff before I pour concrete right now. At the far end of the greenhouse, I just have one window open there. And this door I don't even have open right now because it's kind of an overcast day, not particularly hot. Um, it's cooler in here than it is outside. Now, if the sun keeps staying out, I'll open up this door. Um, maybe I'll turn one like 100 watt fan on to move some air because it's not particularly windy today. But in the summertime, usually the wind is coming from the cool north. Uh, so I have this overhead door open and at the back, way back there. Um, so that wind, that nice breeze, it's cool right where I am. It's That wind's coming cool north, all this shaded area. I'm standing in the shade, nice and cool. It just, this just works, right? So when you see other designs where I have a 45 degree angle slope and this shaded area. Other designs, it'll have a, a slope like this. So it'll be, um, they'll have snow load problems in the winter time and overheating problems in the summertime. Mine, my design solves both of those issues. We've been spending the majority of our time moving stuff outside and all of our spring planting and outside planting. So don't mind the, the mess, but everything's doing well. So we, uh, it takes a lot of water. If you do any sort of raised bed, even if it's outside, expect to use double or triple the water because it's higher up. It just dries out quicker. Um, so that's one thing to consider doing raised beds. That's a big downfall. But, uh, and we just water by hand still at this point. Um, but I am, once the concrete's in, I'm putting water lines to some, to some spigots up on posts uh, where I can have pressurized water as well as gravity fed water from my rainwater collection tanks that's gonna go through the concrete, probably enough pressure to, uh, to get some without the use of any energy. I might even put a little pump for my rainwater uh, tanks to pressurize the line so I can water everything with rainwater. And I'm probably gonna do some drip lines and automatic watering so it cuts my workload down to nothing for watering. But um, yeah, here's some more fruit trees. We got lemon, guava, lime, passion fruit, and something else. Um, one of our banana pups, it was tough to keep it moist. It didn't have much of root, roots when I took it off, but it is alive. She's alive. Uh, here's another banana pup that is showing signs of growth on there. Great. And what did, we just cleaned some of this out. I think the wife did a big pepper patch. Uh, flowers, doing great. Some of these flowers of my wife's are just insane. There's the odd little strawberry there, but we're probably not watering enough and they're drying out. Uh, huge onions. I can't believe how good that they did. And uh, yeah, we took some to seed. Yeah, I got some bare spots, some new stuff we just planted. Uh, tomatoes are bearing tomatoes. Uh, there's a few yummy already. So lots of flowers. Garlic, I can't believe how good... Uh, garlic did in a greenhouse. Carrots are great. Jeez, the soil in this raised bed sure dries out quick. Avocado. Mango is a uh, hurting unit. It doesn't like it in here. I don't know why. Little lemon needs some water. Some peppers. Some peas. Uh, yeah. 
mint, flowers, our tangerine. I don't know what I did, but I think I killed it. Oh, darn it. It fruited and um, gave us a few tangerines, and then it dropped all its leaves. So I don't know about that. This is all a big experiment. This fig, though, we had fresh figs. Oh, man, fresh figs are good. I've never had a fresh fig before, but it really likes it in the greenhouse. Anyways, um, yeah, if you're building a greenhouse, spend the time designing. Have half of it shaded in the summer solstice and full sun in the winter solstice. It stays cool in the summer and hot in the winter. Exactly what you want. Okay, it just works. So I did a full construction video of it. I did a full initial tour of it in the winter time. Um, all the information is there for what you need. But yeah, literally people were like, how do you vent it in the summertime? You need vents all up here to open up automatically. It's like, no, I don't. No, I designed it so it's uh, half shaded in here. Uh, so it doesn't overheat. Boom. I haven't even rolled up that poly, like I said, for the bus windows to open up. So before I insulate it up there, uh, I had to open up all those bus windows, get all this ventilation, all these windows on the side, this door over here. But like I said, the sun kind of peaked out. It's the first day of summer, I believe, and it's June 21st, winter solstice. You know, comfortable shorts and t-shirt weather, but slightly overcast today. And I barely have anything open. That whole bottom's not open. Only one window over there. This door, double-double uh, door, isn't even open yet. But the north is open over there. So, yeah, super, super happy. This is the way. It just works. So my uh, ice cream variety banana tree is about 10 to 11 feet tall. No f signs of fruit yet, but it's the tree's doing amazing. It's got growth, uh, so we water it a lot. And I can tell all the leaves are kind of facing the sun because this whole banana tree right now is in the shade for the summer. Um, it's permanently planted in the ground. And it is doing really, really good. So it's not burning. When I when it was a baby plant, I had it in the sun in the summer, and it looked like the it wasn't happy. The leaves were burning. This looks super, super healthy. Um, some of our flow the flowers here are could be doing better if it had direct sunlight, likely. But um, y you know, it, it, it when it gets really hot. A lot of things are going to burn just like they would burn outside. So we just have to kind of work out a system once we're I'm done building this this sucker completely. But uh, uh, planning where we plant things for where the shade is. But uh, so this this side sidewalk is part of the concrete I'll be planting. So it'll be black, 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 and I'm going to just mark my where the summer solstice is and switch to white paint so the sidewalk will switch really dark for the thermal mass uh, collecting as much sun energy as possible and then switching to white all this concrete's going to have uh, pex in floor heat piping uh, with rainwater in it that's just going to circulate uh, at least all winter maybe all year round and then all this concrete here is going to be bright white to reflect light in this in the summertime when the sun's at 60 degrees and when it's at 14 degrees at the winter solstice it's going to be shaded anyway so it doesn't even need to be black but uh yeah i'm super super happy with this it's this is all big experiment like this is my design how it's really, really deep, has all this shaded area, and it's just working 
I don't know, fantastic. There is nothing I would have changed, so I'm glad I took all the time in my in designing it uh, for exactly my location on the planet, and it just works. So if you live in an extreme cold part of the world, extreme north, high latitude, this would probably be the most important thing, and yet I don't know why people don't build it. They build... Rich people build things for pools. I'm not rich, by the way. I have to build all this stuff myself. I'm shoveling shit pipes right now. <laughs> so um, people do this for pools. There's this million-dollar house close to me. They put a pool pool in. There's no south windows. It's just this stuck, dark stuccoed. It's so so silly. Yeah, if you just had a little bit of building building knowledge you know um especially if you try to eat healthy like fresh fruits and vegetables like they eat in most parts of the world like most of the human population they eat fresh fruits and vegetables they can grow things like year round type of thing they eat fresh meat fresh eggs fresh fruits fresh vegetables well here you can't grow stuff for eight months of the year and I'm trying to eat a healthy diet, right? To, for both my health, my family's health, my kids' health. Um, eat like the majority of other cultures that live closer to the equator where the majority of the population is. Um, this is. This is important. This is very important. So I expect uh, some uh, people looking at these videos to be building their own. Uh, I'd recommend don't go too small, uh, just like the concept of a, a pond. You don't want to dig a small pond because it doesn't have enough thermal mass to the water. So it's going to overheat and create algae and kill, kill anything in there in the heat of the summer. And it's going to get deoxygenated and freeze solid in the wintertime. So your pond has to be a certain size to have enough, a certain amount of mass for it to work properly. So it's kind of like the, the tiny house uh, movement thing. So it, it does take less to heat, but per square foot, it's much, much easier to heat a very large properly built building of any kind that has tons of thermal mass in it. So for example, a camper, if you're going to build a greenhouse that's poorly insulated like all campers and very small like all campers, if you've ever been camping in one of those things in the wintertime, if the furnace quits, if your generator cuts out and the furnace doesn't work, it is the same temperature in the camper as outside within 10, 15, 20 minutes. Okay? Uh, a big properly built building like a greenhouse, it collects all that sun during the day and releases it back at night and only when you need the heat. In the summertime, it's shaded. It's just got a mass to it um, that equalizes everything. Doesn't matter what time of the year it is. So, I don't know, that's probably enough ranting. Um, I'm finally done my outside chores, a bunch of paperwork sitting at a bloody desk. Uh, so I'm finally getting to sewer lines so sinks, commercial sinks, drains, floor drains, floor drain basins. Because, you know, we're a farm. I'm going to be actually producing stuff and using kind of the greenhouse in the summer as a processing portion for all of our outside stuff eventually. But, and then I got rebar. Holy crap, is that expensive? Um, In-floor heat piping and gonna try to get this sucker poured with concrete literally within two weeks here so i got a lot of work to do but i'm now finally have time to commit to a building so stay tuned i guess um maybe i'll do some quick clips of of the construction but i'll do uh another construction video after it's kind of complete uh later this fall i guess so Anyways, stay tuned. Happy winter solstice. The days are getting shorter as of today already, so 
enjoy life a little bit as well but also we only have a fine window small window to get shit done in Canada so now is building 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 in the summer and you can rest next winter okay good luck so if you're ready to jump down the deep winter passive solar super insulated greenhouse rabbit hole with me I did a full construction video of every step of the way. I did an initial tour of the greenhouse in the winter time. I did a most commonly uh, asked questions that I answered for everybody. And even Canadian Prepper did a video on his channel over there. So check it out, like, subscribe, comment if this was helpful for you. Get to building, take care.